I told you I would. Not finished yet. Yes, you are. <laughs> no, I'm not. Liam Neeson is an Irish actor, officer of the Order of the British Empire, and a nominee for the most prestigious film awards. Despite playing various roles, Neeson gained worldwide fame as the hero of action thriller movies. Watch our new video to learn more about the unique journey of this actor who became an action star at 55 years old. Liam Neeson, how Hollywood's tough guy lives and how much he earns. It could not be better. William John Neeson was born on June 7, 1952, in the town of Ballymena in Northern Ireland, into a modest large family of Catherine, a cook, and Bernard, a school caretaker. The future actor's parents were devout Catholics and named their son after a local priest. In addition to William, whom everyone called Liam, they had three daughters, Elizabeth, Bernadette, and Rosaline. From 1963 to 1967, our hero attended St. Patrick's Catholic College in Ballymena. When Neeson was 11, his English teacher suggested he participate in a school play, and he agreed because a girl he liked was in the cast. However, earlier at the age of 9, Liam became interested in boxing, because of which he suffered a broken nose. He started training at a local youth club and even won several regional titles, but after fainting in the ring, he decided to quit sports and focus on acting. As a teenager, Neeson continued to participate in school plays and perform in small amateur theaters. Nevertheless, after school, he decided to pursue a more serious education and enrolled in Queen's University of Belfast in 1971, where he studied physics and computer science. At the same time, Neeson began acting in student plays. He also discovered a soccer talent. An Irish soccer manager noticed the promising young man and invited him to try out for Dublin's Bohemian Football Club. Liam played one game as a substitute, but was not offered a contract. With little time for studies, Liam was soon expelled for poor academic performance. As a result, he returned to Ballymena and took on several temporary jobs, working for the Guinness Brewery and as a truck driver. However, he did not forget his calling, attending numerous auditions and occasionally taking on minor roles. In addition, Neeson spent two years at St. Mary's Teaching College in Newcastle and then returned to his hometown. From 1976 to 1978, Liam performed at the Lyric Theatre in Belfast. One of the most significant plays of that period was Philadelphia Here I Come by Brian Friel. Interestingly, the actor still cooperates with the theatre and even works as its patron. 1977, Neeson landed his first film role, playing an evangelist and appearing as the crucified Jesus Christ in the fantasy adventure movie Pilgrim's Progress, released in 1978. A year later, he starred in the sequel titled Christiana. During that period, the actor moved to Dublin where he participated in productions of the Project Art Center and the Abbey Theater. In 1980, director John Borman noticed Neeson in one of the plays and offered him the role of Sir Gawain in the Arthurian fantasy film Excalibur. He's our best and our bravest. Why then is he never here? Without Lancelot, this table is nothing! During the filming, Liam met Helen Mirren, and they soon began dating. After the release of the film in 1981, our hero moved to London with Mirren, where he continued to work in the theater and appeared in low-budget films and TV projects. In 1983, Neeson played minor roles in the fantasy films Kroll and Arthur the King, and in 1984, he appeared in the dramatic series Ellis Island. Around the same time, the historical adventure film The Bounty was released. You take your hands off him! Take him. your hands off him now! Kill him. him! Get your hands off him! Now! The film failed at the box office, but received favorable reviews from critics. In 1985, after a four-year relationship, Neeson and Mirren parted ways. Later, the actor admitted that he was very grateful to have had a woman like Helen in his life and she, in turn, warmly remembered her former partner. During the same period, the actor played in the dramas The Innocent and Lamb, and appeared in episodes of the drama TV series A Woman of Substance, If Tomorrow Comes, and Miami Vice. Additionally, he had a brief romance with supermodel Janice Dickinson, which ended a couple of months later. 
Another significant film of that period was The Mission, a historical drama about the Jesuit mission among the Guarani Indians, which premiered in 1986. Liam appeared on screen alongside Robert De Niro, playing the role of Father John Fielding. Father, he's done this penance long enough. And, well, the other brothers think the same. But he doesn't have so drunk. The film won numerous awards, including an Oscar. The same year, Neeson had a minor role in Andrei Konchalovsky's melodrama Duet for One, and after that, he decided to move to Hollywood to land more significant and noticeable roles. In 1987, our hero appeared in the dramatic thriller A Prayer for the Dying, the TV drama Sworn to Silence, the miniseries Hold the Dream, and the detective thriller Suspect. In the latter, Liam portrayed a deaf Vietnam War veteran accused of a brutal crime. In 1988, Neeson appeared in the series Screen 2, the crime action film The Deadpool with Clint Eastwood playing the lead role, the drama The Good Mother, and the fantasy comedy High Spirits. During the filming of the romantic musical dramedy Satisfaction in 1988, the 35-year-old actor met 20-year-old Julia Roberts and a romance quickly blossomed between them. Liam and Julia had been dating for two years and parted ways in 1990. In 1989, the actor starred in the crime thriller Next of Kin and then worked on the drama The Big Man and the superhero thriller Darkman. In the latter two films, Neeson played the lead roles and, as he mentioned, he had time only for work and sleep then. His efforts paid off as Darkman was warmly received by both the audiences and critics, earning him a Saturn Award nomination. What am I? Huh? Some kind of a circus freak? Is that it? Is that it? Some kind of a freak? In 1991, the neo noir erotic thriller Under Suspicion was released, for which Liam received an award for Best Actor at the Crime Film Festival in Cognac. Also during that period, the actor started dating Barbara Streisand, but their relationship ended after only nine months. In 1992, Neeson appeared in Woody Allen's dramedy Husbands and Wives, which was praised by critics. The actor also starred in the war drama Shining Through, where he played a member of the Nazi party and in the dramedy Leap of Faith. Also, the actor had a new love interest. It was the star of The Blue Lagoon, Brooke Shields. Neeson proposed to her after just three months of dating, but she declined, knowing that he would soon fall in love with another co-star. They broke up after a while and Brooke's words turned out to be prophetic. In early 1993, while working on the Broadway production of Eugene O'Neill's play Anna Christie, Liam met Natasha Richardson and they immediately felt a mutual attraction. At that time, Natasha was married but her marriage to producer Robert Fox was falling apart so the two lovers began dating soon. According to Neeson, their attraction was so strong that the audience could feel the chemistry on stage and every performance was sold out. In addition to the life-changing meeting, Anna Christie brought the actors nominations for the prestigious Tony Award. During the same period, the actor appeared in the dramatic thriller Ruby Cairo and the historical melodrama Ethan Frome. At the end of 1993, Neeson had a turning point in his career. The epic historical drama Schindler's List, directed by Steven Spielberg and based on real events, was released. In this film, our hero played the German industrialist Oskar Schindler, who saved more than a thousand Jews during the Holocaust. People die. It's a fact of life. He wants to kill everybody? Great. What am I supposed to do about it? Bring everybody over? Is that what you think? Send them over to Schindler. Send them all. The black and white film, which became a classic of American cinema, brought the actor $1.5 million and worldwide recognition. Neeson was nominated for an Oscar, a Golden Globe, and a BAFTA for Best Actor and won the Chicago Film Critics Association Award. Interestingly, Liam got the role of Schindler because he had impressed Spielberg with his performance in the film Shining Through, playing a Nazi. By the way, in the final scene, an unknown man laying flowers on Schindler's grave was not Spielberg as many viewers believe. In fact, it was Liam Neeson himself. In 1994, Liam and Natasha purchased a mansion in the northern area of New York and on July 3rd celebrated their wedding. It is known that about 70 people attended the ceremony, including Emma Thompson and Steven Spielberg. According to Neeson, Natasha worked wonders, turning him from a confirmed bachelor into a devoted family man. 
Moreover, Liam even turned down the role of James Bond in the action movie Goldeneye because Natasha stated she wouldn't marry him if he accepted the role. The actor chose marriage and the role of Bond went to Pierce Brosnan. The same year, Neeson starred in the drama Nil together with his wife, and in 1995, he played the lead role of the 18th century Scottish clan leader in the historical drama Rob Roy. On June 22, 1995, Liam and Natasha had their firstborn, Michael. Incidentally, he followed in his parents' footsteps and pursued an acting career. In 1996, Neeson appeared in the crime drama Before and After alongside Meryl Streep, and the historical drama Michael Collins was released. Everything's possible if you wish hard enough. No, who said that? You did. No. It was him. Peter Pan. His role as a fighter for Ireland's independence in the early 20th century earned Neeson the Volpe Cup for Best Actor at the Venice Film Festival and a Golden Globe nomination. The actor also participated in voicing several episodes of the documentary miniseries The Great War and the Shaping of the 20th Century. On August 27, 1996, Liam became a father for the second time. Natasha gave birth to another boy named Daniel. In 1998, Neeson worked as the narrator in the documentary film Everest and starred in the adaptation of Victor Hugo's novel Les Miserables, portraying the former convict Jean Valjean. The same year, the actor played Oscar Wilde in the play The Judas Kiss by David Hare at the Almeida Theatre in London. In 1999, Neeson took on the role of Jedi Qui-Gon Jinn in the epic space opera Star Wars Episode I, The Phantom Menace. Anakin. Training to become a Jedi is not an easy challenge, and even if you succeed, it's a hard life. The actor was so eager to participate in the project that he agreed to star without even reading the script. Interestingly, the filmmakers had to spend an additional $150,000 on new sets because the original ones were unsuitable due to Neeson's tall stature of 6 foot 4 inches. The film became one of the highest grossing movies of the year and Liam was paid $2.5 million. Additionally, the actor was nominated for a Saturn Award and an MTV Movie Award. The same year, Neeson appeared in the supernatural horror film The Haunting based on the novel by Shirley Jackson. While the film was successful with the audiences, critics gave it negative reviews. The following year, Liam starred in the black comedy Gunshy and worked as the narrator in the documentary film The Endurance Shackleton's Legendary Antarctic Expedition. In 2002, the dramatic disaster film K-9 The Widowmaker was released, depicting the accident on a Soviet nuclear submarine. You needlessly endangered this boat and its crew. 200 million Soviet citizens are depending on us, on us, Captain Vostrokov, to save them from nuclear attack. You risk them as well. The film received mixed reviews from critics and performed poorly at the box office, but the actor received $3 million for his role. Neeson also appeared in Martin Scorsese's historical drama Gangs of New York. Plague our people at every turn. But from this day out, you shall plague us no more. For let it be known that the hand that tries to strike us from this land shall be swiftly cut down. The film was praised by both critics and audiences and received nominations for prestigious awards. During filming, Liam was involved in an accident, colliding with a deer while riding his motorcycle. Fortunately, he managed to avoid serious injuries. Despite having a minor role, the actor earned $2 million for this film. During that period, Liam also acted in the play The Crucible by Arthur Miller at the August Wilson Theatre on Broadway. For this role, the actor received his second Tony Award nomination. In 2003, he appeared in the Christmas romantic comedy Love Actually and received $250,000 for this film. In 2004, Neeson played the American sexologist Alfred Kinsey in the biopic Kinsey, which received high praise from critics. If every single living thing is different from every other living thing, then diversity becomes life's one irreducible fact. His role earned him nominations for the Golden Globe and Independent Spirit Awards. In 2005, Liam appeared in Ridley Scott's historical action film Kingdom of Heaven and the dramedy Breakfast on Pluto. Additionally, Neeson worked on the epic fantasy film The Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, providing the voice for the lion Aslan, a role initially intended for Brian Cox. The same year, the actor starred in Christopher Nolan's superhero action film Batman Begins, playing the main antagonist Ra's al Ghul. He also voiced his character in the eponymous video game. 
Neeson's role in the first part of the new Batman trilogy earned him $2 million and a Saturn Award nomination. You are ready to lead these men. You are ready to become a member of the League of Shadows. But first, you must demonstrate your commitment to justice. The following year, the western Seraphim Falls was released, where Neeson played the revenge-driven Colonel Carver. In fact, the actor compared his character to Captain Ahab from Moby Dick, for whom revenge was the meaning of life as well. In the early 2000s, Liam voiced various documentary films such as Journey into Amazing Caves, Revenge of the Whale, Coral Reef Adventure, and Patrick, as well as in the historical drama Martin Luther, the animated film Liberty's Kids, and the animated sitcom The Simpsons. In early 2008, a new stage began in Neeson's career. The thrilling crime action film Taken hit the big screens where the actor portrayed retired CIA operative Brian Mills seeking revenge for the kidnapping of his daughter. I will look for you. I will find you. And I will kill you. Good luck. To prepare for the role, 54-year-old Liam had to learn parkour from scratch. However, his efforts paid off. The film performed excellently at the box office, collecting $226 million with a budget of $25 million, turning our hero into an action star. Additionally, Neeson received a record $5 million for the film. The same year, Liam voiced Aslan again in the fantasy film The Chronicles of Narnia, Prince Caspian, and starred in the psychological thriller The Other Man. In 2009, Neeson appeared in the thrillers Five Minutes of Heaven and Afterlife and began working on the erotic thriller Chloe, the shooting of which was interrupted by a family tragedy. On March 16, 2009, Natasha Richardson suffered a serious head injury while skiing. Initially, she declined medical help, but a few hours later complained of severe headache. Soon, she fell into a coma and two days later passed away. After her death, Neeson donated her organs for transplantation. It was later revealed that her heart, liver, and kidneys saved the lives of three people. Neeson left the film set as soon as he learned about the incident, but returned to work a few days after his wife's death. Producers and directors made it up to the actor, and the remaining scenes were shot in just two days. Having recovered from grief, Neeson continued working on new projects. In 2010, Liam portrayed Zeus in the adventure fantasy action film Clash of the Titans. I created them, and they reward my love with defiance. There will be no truce. According to the actor, he accepted this role because his sons were big fans of Greek mythology. He was paid $5 million for the film. Our hero also voiced Aslan once again in the adventure fantasy film The Chronicles of Narnia – The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, during the filming of which he met actress Laura Brett. According to some rumors, they were dating for several months. Next, the actor starred in the crime thriller The Next Three Days and played Colonel John Hannibal Smith in the action comedy The A-Team. For this role, the former smoker Neeson had to return to the harmful habit at the director's insistence. Additionally, Liam worked as the narrator in another documentary film about the ascent of Everest titled The Wildest Dream, and appeared in an episode of the dramedy series The Big C. After parting ways with Brent, the actor went out with a new girlfriend, businesswoman, and publicist Freya St. Johnson. However, their romance ended two years later, and since then, Liam has kept his personal life secret. In 2011, our hero starred in the action thriller Unknown, played a cameo role in the sitcom Life's Too Short, and voiced Qui-Gon Jinn in the animated series Star Wars The Clone Wars. At the same time, the drama action film The Grey was released, depicting survival in the snowy forests of Alaska. We kill them. One at a time. Tip the numbers. That's what they're doing to us. Initially, the film's protagonist was supposed to be significantly younger, and Bradley Cooper was approved for the role. However, he later dropped out of the project, and the role went to Neeson. Subsequently, the premiere of the adventure fantasy action film Wrath of the Titans took place, where Liam returned to the role of Zeus and earned $7 million. Also, he starred in the science fiction action film Battleship, receiving $10 million and a nomination for the Golden Raspberry Award, and in Christopher Nolan's superhero action film The Dark Knight Rises, where he played a minor role. The same year, 2012, Neeson played Brian Mills once again in Taken 2. 
The film was even more commercially successful, and the celebrity earned a whopping $15 million. In 2013, Liam appeared in the romantic drama Third Person and played a minor role in the comedy Anchorman 2 The Legend Continues, for which he was nominated for an MTV Movie Award. In 2014, the detective action film Nonstop was released, where Bill Marks, Neeson's character, was to identify a criminal who hijacked a passenger liner. In one scene, you can see that Bill's full name is William, just like Liam's own. It is also interesting that the interior of the aircraft cabin was intentionally made larger than that of real planes of this type to accommodate the tall actor. And someone on this flight is threatening to kill a passenger unless $150 million is transferred in the next 18 minutes. Who knows about this? You and me. Meanwhile, the actor's salary continued to rise, and his role in Nonstop earned him $20 million. Then, the comedy western A Million Ways to Die in the West was released. Liam agreed to the role on the condition that his character, Clinch Leatherwood, would speak with a strong Irish accent, and the director readily accepted it. The same year, 2014, Liam starred in the neo-noir action thriller A Walk Among the Tombstones, which paid off before its release. Thanks to the actor's popularity and the success of his previous works, the film quickly sold out on the global market after distribution. How much is it going to bother you? I take that knife away and stick it in your neck. Could you really do that? Yeah, I really could, but I'd rather not. Additionally, Neeson played Brian Mills again in the action thriller Taken 3, which became the conclusion of the trilogy. You do exactly as you were told. Don't improvise. Try anything funny, and they'll kill you. And if they don't, I will. The actor initially had no plans to work on the third film, but eventually agreed to be part of the project for $20 million, which nearly reached half of the film's budget. In fact, Neeson paid back by performing all the fight scenes himself. During that period, Neeson also lent his voice to characters in several animated films, including Kumba, The Nut Job, The Lego Movie, and The Prophet. He also worked as the narrator in the documentary films Love Thy Nature and The Road. In 2015, our hero played a former member of the Irish Mafia in the crime action film Run All Night. Interestingly, the main character's children have the same names as Neeson's son, Michael and Daniel. Following that, the actor played a cameo role in the dramedy Entourage and the fantasy comedy Ted 2. He also voiced characters in several LEGO video games. The next year saw the release of the South Korean war drama Operation Chromite and the fantasy drama A Monster Calls, where the actor's voice, expressions, and movements were used to bring the monsters to life. He also appeared on the sketch show Inside Amy Schumer and voiced an episode of the comedy series Dream Corp LLC. In late 2016, the historical drama Silence by Martin Scorsese premiered, where Liam portrayed Jesuit priest Cristobal Ferreira. We find our original nature in Japan, Rodriguez. Perhaps it's what's meant by finding God. By the way, Neeson and Daniel Day-Lewis had exchanged roles in projects that had been in development for several years. Neeson was originally the primary candidate for the lead role in the biopic Lincoln, but he left the project and Day-Lewis took his place. However, when Day-Lewis left silence, Neeson stepped in. Despite having positive reviews from film critics, Scorsese's film failed at the box office. In 2017, Neeson appeared in the short romantic comedy Red Nose Day Actually, which followed the lives of the characters from the film Love Actually. He also played a cameo role in the comedy Daddy's Home 2 and worked as the narrator in the family movie A Christmas Star. Then he appeared in the political thriller Mark Felt, The Man Who Brought Down the White House, based on real events. Neeson played FBI agent Mark Felt, who became an informant for the press during the Watergate scandal in the 1970s. You are safe. We, the FBI, all your secrets are safe with us. In early 2018, our hero appeared in the action thriller film The Commuter. He then played an impresario in the novella Meal Ticket, part of the Coen Brothers Western anthology The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Additionally, he starred in the detective drama Widows. In 2019, Liam appeared in the action comedy Cold Pursuit. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm just a guy who keeps a strip of civilization open through the wilderness for people. 
In this film, his experience of working as a truck forklift driver came in handy, and he managed to operate a snowplow. The actor also had a small role in the action comedy Men in Black International, starred in the romantic drama Ordinary Love, and voiced Jedi Master Qui-Gon Jinn in the space opera Star Wars Episode IX The Rise of Skywalker. Later, Liam starred in the action film Honest Thief and the dramedy Made in Italy with his eldest son, Michael Richardson, who changed his last name in memory of his late mother. Jack, this is Jessica. Hi, Jessica. F*** you. Jessica. Jessica. Jennifer. 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 Sh in 2021, Liam appeared in the action thrillers The Marksman and The Ice Road. A year later, another action film, Blacklight, hit the screens. The film performed poorly at the box office, and many critics considered it one of the worst in the actor's career. The same year, Neeson played the role of a contract killer suffering from Alzheimer's disease in the action thriller Memory and portrayed a private detective in the neo-noir Marlowe. Additionally, Liam appeared in the teen sitcom Dairy Girls, played a cameo role in the dramedy series Atlanta, and returned to the character Qui-Gon Jinn for the miniseries Obi-Wan Kenobi and the animated series Tales of the Jedi. In August 2023, the action film Retribution was released, and in September 2023, the action thriller In the Land of Saints and Sinners premiered at the Venice Film Festival, where Liam once again played a former assassin. At present, two thrillers are in post-production, Thug and Cold Storage. We'll see more films of such genre in the future. A Willing Patriot, Charlie Johnson in the Flames, The Riker's Ghost, and Ice Road 2, Road to the Sky. Also, the comedy thriller The Naked Gun and the drama The Trainer are going to be released soon. Liam Neeson has repeatedly appeared in commercials for well-known brands. Moreover, in the United States, he is recognized as the most effective commercial actor. For example, in 2015, he starred in a commercial for the mobile game Clash of Clans, and in 2016, he and his son Michael appeared together in a stylish advertisement for LG TVs. Both commercials were broadcast during the Super Bowl and gained immense popularity on YouTube. As Neeson has participated in numerous successful projects, he's amassed a substantial fortune. It is known that the actor's net worth is estimated at $145 million. In 1994, Neeson and Richardson bought a three-bedroom apartment on Central Park West in New York for $1.4 million. However, almost all the windows in the apartment faced the wall of a neighboring building, and in August 2010, Liam sold it for $1.35 million. The same year, 1994, the celebrity couple bought a historic colonial-style 6,000-square-foot estate located in Dutchess County, New York. The cost of the mansion is undisclosed. It features five spacious bedrooms and bathrooms, while the backyard includes a pristine lawn, an outdoor pool, a tennis court, and a greenhouse. According to Neeson, when he is at the estate, he sometimes feels that one day, the door will open and he will see Natasha again. Besides the luxurious estate, Liam owns cars such as the Chevrolet Suburban and Audi Q7, BMW 5 Series, and the Bentley Continental GT. The actor donates substantial money to various charity foundations. Once, he raised 20,000 pounds for the breast cancer research and even auctioned one of his lightsabers from Star Wars. In March 2011, the actor was appointed UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador. In 2000, Queen Elizabeth II honored Neeson with the Order of the British Empire. Additionally, the actor received several honor awards from the government of Ireland. Liam loves animals and is passionate about power walking and fishing. He hasn't forgotten his childhood interest in boxing and even met Muhammad Ali once, whom he greatly respects. It is also known that the actor is friends with Ray Fiennes and Kieran Hines. In 2014, the actor admitted that after his wife's death, he could drink about two to three bottles of wine a night. Fortunately, he managed to pull himself together and quit drinking. Neeson holds Irish and British citizenship, and in 2009, he naturalized as an American citizen. He openly expresses his opinions on political and social issues. For example, he spoke against Brexit and unlimited gun ownership rights in the United States, supported the legalization of abortion in Ireland, and in 2014, condemned Putin's actions in Ukraine. Do you prefer Liam Neeson playing dramatic roles or portraying tough guys? Thank you. Thank you. If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.